Hi guys, this current challenge is called migratory birds. So here we are studying a population of birds migrating across the continents. And we want to identify the birds by an integer value. So in other words, we are going to have an array or a collection and we are going to store in it all the type of birds that we see using their IDs. So we want to find what type of bird is most common given a list of sightings. Let's say we see a bird of type 1, then we will add 1 to our array. When we see a bird of type 2, then we add the number 2 to our array. If we see type 1 again, then we will add 1 one more time to our array. So when we are done, we're going to have an array looking like this, what I'm trying to highlight here. So we have one, one, two, two, and three. So this means that type one and type two were both seen twice and type three was seen only once. Now our goal here is what they've written here, what I'm highlighting, your task is to print the type number of that bird. And if two or more types of birds are equally common, choose the type with the smallest ID number. So here we want to find out the type of bird that is most commonly seen and we can return either type one. So we can return one or we can return two because both of them are seen an equal number of times. But we pick one because one is less than two. In other words, the ID one is smaller than the ID two. So we return one in our function. A better example is what we can see here in their sample inputs. Let's say we see six birds and type one, type five, and type three were seen only once, but type four was seen three times. In this case, we return four because um, obviously type four was seen more times than the other types of birds. And if I scroll down here, one last example, let's say we spot 11 birds. We can just map the type of birds with their frequency, how many times they are seen, and then pick the one that is most commonly seen and return its ID. But of course here, type three and type four, both of them have been seen three times, but we return three because the ID three is smaller than the ID four. So here inside uh, my editor here, you can see on the right side, this is my solution for the function called migratory birds. I've already written my solution. So I'm just going to go through it line by line. So what it does here, it, it accepts a vector of integers. In other words, a dynamic array, which corresponds to all the IDs of the birds that we've seen. Duplicates are allowed as you've seen before in the instruction. So here, what I'm trying to do is using the hints that they've given us here by mapping the types of birds with their frequency. I'm just creating a map and the keys inside that map are going to be integers and the values are also going to be integers. And I'm calling that map birds. And then I am looping through my array here, my dynamic array, and I am accessing every ID here and I'm using it to increment the counts or increment the values for that key inside my map. In other words, let's say if I see one, then I would say birds and birds is my map. So I will say birds one using the index operator here, meaning that I'm going to access inside my map, the key for one, and I'm going to increment its value by one. So if the key one doesn't exist in my map, then it's going to get created and the value is going to be increased. If it already exists, then the value is going to be updated. And then here I want to track which type of bird is most commonly seen. So I need a certain tracker in the form of an iterator. So I'm creating an iterator here. I'm calling it tracker and I'm setting it to the first pair inside my map because the map consists of pairs, right? It's key value pairs. And then here I'm creating a loop because I need to loop through my map. Note that once this for loop is done running, we will have a map looking like this where the types or the IDs of the birds are mapped with the frequency, how many times they've been seen during the migration. So now I can loop through my map here. I create another iterator that I call ITR and I set it to be equal to the next pair inside my map. So here I'm using what we call in C++ pre increments That's why you see plus plus before the name of my iterator, which is tracker. So what this will do is it will move the tracker one position forward inside my map and then assign it to ITR here. The reason why I'm doing that is because there's no point assigning the same value here, the same iterator to compare it because here we're going to compare values. So if we compare the same iterator, it doesn't make sense. So we're going to use that iterator to go through our full map. And then at every iteration, we're going to compare if the value that we can access through that iterator 
is greater than the value from our tracker. So if it isn't, we're simply going to assign the value of our current iterator to our tracker. Otherwise, if the values are equal, so this is for cases like what you saw here, where type four and type three, both of them had the same values. So if they are the same that we want to compare, if the key of our tracker is less than the key of our iterator, our other iterator, then in this case, we want to maintain our current tracker value. Otherwise, we want to assign it the value of our iterator. So as clarification in C++, when you use maps, because the map consists of pairs, when you see this, the arrow notation and second, it means we want to access the value. If you see the arrow notation and first, it means we want to access the key. So here we are comparing the values right inside the map. And here we are comparing the keys. In other words, know that the keys corresponds to the IDs of the birds, or you can say the types of the birds. Anyway, once this is done running, our tracker is going to correspond to the type of bird that is most commonly seen. So we simply return its key. In other words, we return the ID of that bird. That's why I have tracker, the arrow notation, and then first. Let me now run this code and it should work fine. So we've passed test case zero and sample test case one. I'm now going to submit these codes. And we've passed all the test cases. So that's it for this hacker rank challenge. Um, now on this channel, I have another video specifically about maps in C++. So you guys can always refer to that. But if you have any questions, just drop them in the comment section and I will try to reply to you as soon as I can. Um, if you like this video, please make sure you subscribe, turn on your notifications, and I'll catch you next time. Bye.